well, this is a familiar sight. Or at least to me it is. It's the Quantum Micro Opponents IM4. I didn't have much to do yesterday. I'd been on my PC for a bit and then I decided, eh, I'm going off it. So I did a lot of other stuff and one of them was this. This board is, to all intents and purposes, completely dead. Does not give me any response whatsoever. Which is annoying. <clears throat> I did like the fact that it's a PC chips board. I did find it out. It's, it's, I said what it is in my other video. It can auto sense your processor to what I can tell because this does not have any of the rest of the jumpers. It has an onboard sound chip. On a header. Onboard video. Which is a SIS6326 chip. Probably 4 or 8 mega RAM. It can take ATX power supplies or AT. Now, I was reading up and there was something about an ATX form header, which is there, which I thought, oh, you must plug that in and then there's some sort of runoff cable that you must have to power for it to work. No, all that does is it adds a USB and a PS2 mouse port. Oh, is that... Oh, the header's down there, I think, for the mouse, I can't remember, but it adds USB and infrared. But it is completely dead. So... Probably like just snap the case up, take the CPU holder off, just as another holder for a socket 7 chip. Or I might just leave it as it is and stick it in the attic. I changed the power supply. This was its original unit. And I basically changed it with the exact same unit, except brand new, because it was one of the ones from the box, which just happened to be a QTEC unit. Whether this was the problem to begin with, I don't know. It wasn't powering any of the optical drives or the hard drives. So that'll just go in the spares collection. No more spares. Now what it did have, or does have, which is kind of cool, is this entire tray comes out for the motherboard. So, I'm actually just going to mount the new one on here and then pop it back in and screw it in place instead of trying to fiddle around with it this time. Just the front panels off. It's actually down there, under the case for now. The new power button. nice and firm. I was actually, with putting the new power supply in, finally able to power these up because I couldn't be bothered to take them out and there was no discs in. This is placed for uh, an input fan. Since I have so many sort of 80 mil fans I might just stick one in for the hell of it. Uh, just because. The board I'm going to replace this unit with is this one and someone's at the door it was the postman probably dropping off another hard drive another Samsung Spinpoint F3 one terabyte for another hard drive caddy that means I need to go in the attic and get another out but yes this is the one I'm going to replace it with uh, another 486 board, however this one's a socket 3, it's not a fixed pin grid board, it also has a lithium ion battery slot, your standard bias chip, now again there isn't actually direct marking on here so I might be tempted to take these stickers off it, 
because I can't do that, it's an it's a M-Rex. That might give me a clue. Now everything is marked on the board, and as far as I can tell, it is all set for a 486DX266. I think they said they were running a 90 megahertz on here. But the settings were pretty much the same. Now, I'm not sure if I've got this the right way around. I hope I have. I don't know if you can put... Well, I assume you can. Uh, it's an AMD 486DX266. I'm probably going to just quickly blue tack this fan on here or something. Since this heatsink doesn't directly allow for the fan. Or I might just... It should be alright, a DX2. It doesn't say it needs a fan, just a heatsink. It's just I would prefer at least a heatsink and fan. No PCI. A little annoying. Uh, not much I can do about that. There is some Visa local bus though. So I might actually change out my 486 graphics card and put it in this. If it seems that this is any better. If not, then I've got just a nicer one down for now when I build this up and test it later but like I say I'm gonna find out which which board it is as best I can and then make sure it's set right power it up but I have to go out today so this will probably be left till tonight but I'll find out what it is this morning hopefully Just listen to the world. world. <sighs> Don't mind me. Um, if it does work, I'd probably like to stick a DX4100 in it. Hopefully, if it fits. I think they have the same pin alignment as the 66, the DX2s. Uh, and if that was the case, then it would probably replace my regular 486, and that would go in the attic. Because no matter what I do, that machine just seems slow. Just sits there and I run Wintune 2.0 and it's, it's hard drive performance and stuff is just negligible. I mean, it's been such a long time since I've really used proper ISA equipment and I can't remember if that's just purely a case of the old ISA parallel ATA, you know, your old IDE. Or if it's a case of you scuzzy and then you'll break the speed limit like that seems to be imposed on these older boards I don't know I have a few SCSI cards and I'm sure I have a SCSI hard drive but I don't think I have the SCSI cable or the terminal the terminal uh, terminate cable so if it turns out to be anything I'll just put in a, a compact flash card if this board will let me for some reason the other 486 board just won't it can see them and use them when you boot from a hard drive but it just won't boot to them as the hard drive. But that's enough for this video. I'll let you know later on if I've got it all found out and installed and started. Usual rate, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube blagging. Any questions, ask. So it's still fairly early morning. It's actually been an hour or two since I did the last video on this new board, well, new, this replacement board for the quantum microponents case and I believe I have figured out what it is an Amptron International DX69 version 175 whether it's an Amptron model itself, who knows but it's got a nice 1.7 on it I was just looking at the previous model thinking well that's it that's it that's it but then I looked at the numbers and saw there's two or three numbers everything matches according to the board I've got it right so no worries on that I just like to at least know if I've got the correct jumpers through some sort of manual information as well so I might screw this onto the board and then I've literally got to shoot off because I have to be out somewhere